Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about the highest paying jobs in tech today. So this video is for anyone who is currently out there and trying to decide what path they want to take in technology. I know that salary and compensation isn't everything that is part of that career decision, but I do think that it's helpful to know what your prospects are when you're deciding which role or specialization that you want to go into. So this will be a list of the top seven jobs in tech that pay the highest salaries across the board. But of course, keep in mind, these are average salaries, so it can definitely vary and range depending on the sector you're in, where you're working out of, the country and the cost of living of whatever city that you're in, as well as your years of experience. All right, so number one on this list is a mobile app developer, and they make on average about $101,000 per year. So this is exactly what it sounds like. You're developing mobile applications for companies in different sectors, including finance, tech, healthcare, and any other sector that needs mobile apps, which nowadays is most of them. Mobile app developers also have a wider range of languages to choose from, whether you're coding in Android Studio, iOS development with Swift, or using tools like React Native and Flutter. As a mobile app developer, you likely have experience with OOP or object-oriented programming, and you may have even come from a full stack background. I know there are people out there who maybe start as a traditional software developer, either full stack, front end, or back end, and then eventually they move to mobile development if that's something that they're more interested in. And I'm sure this is pretty self-explanatory, but you're essentially building applications for mobile platforms. You're likely working with your stakeholders and design teams to understand what the users actually want, and then scoping out and building those actual features for the users to test and integrate with whatever else that they're using and basically every other part of the agile software development lifecycle that normal developers use. I think mobile app development was definitely one of the cooler jobs maybe 10 or so years ago when every company randomly decided that they suddenly needed an app in the app store or in the google play store and even nowadays if you're currently going for your associate's or bachelor's degree you may or may not take a mobile development class it may be considered an elective and you can choose to take it or maybe if you're going to a boot camp they're most likely teaching you full stack development rather than mobile development and you would have to go to a more niche bootcamp specifically for Android or for iOS. And honestly, because of that, there's actually a shortage of mobile developers specifically for Android in many companies because iOS at some point became the cooler language to learn for mobile developers. Of course, this is all just based on what I've seen in my experience in tech. So there may be articles stating the same or articles stating otherwise. But of course, this mainly is based on what you are interested in and what you prefer in terms of which language and mobile OS to go for. But either way, it's a great specialization, especially if you want to go into software engineering, but you also want to try something a little bit different. By the way, mobile app developers are actually the lowest salary on this list of seven. So that means this whole entire list is six figure jobs. So it's only up from here. So going down the list, the next role is a DevOps engineer who make on average about $114,000 per year. DevOps teams bring a breadth of support and tools for the development teams when it comes to processes, procedures, other applications and tools to balance anything needed for the software development lifecycle. This could be code deployment, scripting, CI CD, or continuous integration, continuous deployment, as well as things like maintenance and updates that are rolled out for patch management of software and anything else to ensure that software is tested, built, deployed, and everything else that goes on in between all of those steps. So basically DevOps engineers have a lot going on for them and, and they typically also tend to be very busy teams with, with engineers who may wear multiple different hats. You may be scripting one day and then working on deployments another day. It all varies and I think that DevOps are kind of the intersection of the jack of all trades in tech between code and everything else. So without a good DevOps team, you probably don't have the best procedures or processes for getting code shipped properly, having it tested thoroughly. You're likely going to work with software developers, system admins, system operators, maybe stakeholders from the business side. And one of your main goals is to constantly improve the actual development and operations that go into the SDLC. As a DevOps engineer, the extent of your coding is most likely going to be scripting. You're probably not going to be building out you know, full stack applications to help developers. I'm sure there are companies out there who are using their DevOps teams to actually build out applications and tools, which can make sense in some cases, but 
but typically in the best case you're most likely going to utilize your devops team for things like batch scripting or scripting with python or basically just creating lightweight scripts that are relatively easier and less time consuming to spin up and just run compared to building out large-scale applications that, that really don't make for the best use of time for your devops team all right next role on this list is the data scientist definitely a job that has become more and more popular in the last five or ten years and the average salary for a data scientist is about $119,000 per year. So I'm sure many of you guys also already know what a data scientist is, but essentially you're taking data, maybe your company has some kind of ETL process, and then your main goal is to interpret the data. So with potentially millions and millions of rolls of data, what can you extract from that, whether it's lessons learned, useful metrics for your business, maybe finding potential gaps in your business, all these potential findings that are derived from that data that you analyze and then being able to turn around and give that to the business and have them make tangible business choices from them. So as a data scientist, one of the coolest things about your job is the fact that you may potentially have chances to impact your company's bottom line or, or the actual business decisions that are made at your company based on the metrics and findings that you gather from the data that you analyze. Now, of course, there are also other roles related to data science, like data engineers and data analysts who may help in some way in building up data pipelines or ETL or just cleaning the data. But as a data scientist, your main focus is going to be deriving those findings from your data and then passing that on to your stakeholders to improve any business functions using various different tools and analysis. I won't pretend like I know what these mean, but hopefully I have a picture of some things that data scientists do that are likely going to be useful on their day to day job a lot of data scientists typically have higher level education for example their masters or their phd and they are also very technical so they probably know how to code they probably know their way around python or any other popular language that is used in the data space and the next role on this list is a somewhat related one and that is the data architect the average salary for a data architect is about $132,000 per year. So as a data architect, the biggest part of your job is going to be creating data models as well as working alongside your data science counterparts. You may be working closely in creating data pipelines, actually implementing databases or database servers, and basically everything that has to do with the actual data itself is probably going to be your job. The most common skills are most likely going to be SQL, which is a very popular querying language for SQL databases. And then of course, having a good knowledge of your other options for NoSQL databases, like graph databases, document databases, every other new type of database that has came out in the last few years. And outside of this technical work, you're likely also going to be the actual person who also documents a lot of the IT policies, procedures, model requirements, or templates that are going to be used by different teams in your company to be able to then collect, organize, and store all of your company's information. There may be some coding involved in your job, for example, you may need to set up different data structures or implement different systems in your company's cloud providers like AWS, Azure, etc., as well as your company's own server structures. So it really is just everything around the data infrastructure of your company and making sure that data starting from the time it's created to the time it is stored somewhere, backed up, archived, etc., that entire flow of that data lifecycle, I guess, is going to be your job to maintain and ensure all that data is, is first of all, properly secured, transferred, stored and accessed only by the necessary parties that need to see that data. All right, next role on this list is the information systems security manager who make on average about $126,000 per year. So I think this is the only official job in cybersecurity on this list or the only job on this list that has the word security in the title. But as a security manager, your job is to make sure everything security related is run smoothly in your organization. Your company may have multiple different security managers overseeing different parts of your company's IT infrastructure, whether it's for computers, networks, databases, it all depends on the size of your company, honestly. And in this role, you could be a people manager as well as a technology manager. And as a security manager, you're likely going to be a little bit closer to the senior leadership team, which also means you may be able to have a higher chance of potentially impacting decisions that are made at the top related to cybersecurity and helping other teams, senior leaders, and anyone else that you have to convince about the different safeguards, components, and risks of your cybersecurity program. If you're going in as a people manager, you're likely going to be spending a lot more time training your team and sourcing out different tasks to different teammates based on their strengths compared to a security manager who is managing the actual technology and making sure that certain projects around their security programs are completed 
make sure you're hitting milestones and keeping the senior leadership team updated. Maybe you're bringing on external vendors that have security capabilities that your company is looking to use, as well as working cross-functionally to make sure that any new technologies that are brought on for your security program are going to integrate smoothly with the rest of your companies, with the rest of your company's systems and anything else that you have in the environment. All right, and the last role on this list is an artificial intelligence engineer who make on average about $164,000 per year, which is by far the highest annual salary on this list. So this probably comes as no surprise to any of you considering, considering AI and machine learning are huge buzzwords just, just in the most recent years, especially as we head towards a future that may potentially embrace more AI technology. And another reason why this salary may be a lot higher than the others is likely because of the fact that a lot of AI and machine learning engineers most likely, most likely will have their PhD or a or a very high level of education compared to other roles that focus more on experience compared to roles like this where your main job is literally research on AI models and what kind of data you feed it and being able to fully understand different probability and statistics concepts that you'll likely need a higher degree for. This is definitely a role that requires coding, especially if you're in languages like R, Java, and Python, as well as different machine learning frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch. But what you do in your day-to-day -day job is really going to vary depending on what company and what sector that you're working for. For example, I'm sure companies like Tesla may have AI engineers that focus specifically on computer vision or making sure that Tesla's on the road can actually analyze and understand the visual images that the system is taking in to make sure that they're not running into a wall or running over person compared to if you work more in academia or in the government side that you're probably trying to build the most realistic AI model that you can to be able to conversate properly with another person and of course there's so many other applications for AI engineering outside of these things like automated chatbots and things like that so it all depends on what you're going for and what you're interested in but I do think that AI and the technology around AI is definitely going to be a big key of humanity in our future and what that's going to look like i have no idea but i definitely think this is going to be a much faster growing field in the next few decades with more investments going towards ai and machine learning all right that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any other roles in technology that i may have missed on this list of course i'm sure there are many many more but i definitely cannot squeeze all those into a into a quick 15 minute video but would love to start a discussion in the comments or in the discord channel linked in the description let me know if you guys have any questions and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye